uh, our Brexit rematch debate for the victorious 52%, Richard Tice, co-chair of Leave Means Leave, and for the vanquished 48%, James McGrory, co-executive director of uh, Open Britain. And do you agree with that, that we are basically heading towards hard Brexit? Yeah, we like to call it a clean Brexit, and Leave Means Leave, we're campaigning for a clean, prompt and effective Brexit so we can get on with it and enjoy the benefits and opportunities that will come when we leave. I think, and actually that's the mood of the country, whether people voted Remain or whether they voted to Leave. They actually want the Prime Minister now to show some real courageous leadership and it, get on with even it. Even at a short-term price of losing those supports that we've had from the European Union? Well, I don't, think, I don't accept that actually there's going to be a short-term price. We've already seen Project Fear being trashed in almost every single sense. And actually, we're a hard-working, transparent economy. In the real estate industry, we're seeing money pouring in from overseas uh, to invest in this country. You're seeing it with other corporate news, Facebook, Google, Amazon. I thought you the had news a 20 percent drop in uh, top-rate properties in London. Uh, people have talked about that in the immediate aftermath, but that's not what we're seeing around okay. the country. All right, but in not. London, you're having a drop, right? In London, there's been a drop in residential. Most of that was due to stamp duty, not due to Brexit. OK, so uh, we're heading towards a clean Brexit. It's what the people want. I'm not sure it is, uh, and certainly not when the, the options are fully put in front of them. And I slightly disagree with the idea that we're just thrust headlong towards a hard, destructive Brexit. If you compare where we were at Conservative Party conference and the rhetoric that was coming out there to where we are now, the messages that are coming out from the government on a transition arrangement to avoid the so-called cliff edge, uh, their admittance really that we're going to have to make some sort of continuing payments to the EU for market access, I think we're headed towards a softer Brexit than some like Richard would perhaps like. The reality is what the ministers are doing, quite rightly, is, is keeping the options open until the Prime Minister comes out and sets her stall. But the benefits of leaving the single market, which has been a really bad deal for Britain over the years... This is Thatcher's idea. Well, that may be, but that was then. We're focusing on the future, not the past. Yeah, but it, I mean, it was a Conservative idea pioneered by Mrs Thatcher, wasn't it? Why yeah, but, is it, why but, is it why but unfortunately, because the, deal deal, because the deal has changed, the amount we pay in has changed, because freedom of movement changed in 2004, you have to react to events. So it's been a bad deal for Britain, so the sooner we leave, the better. And we have to leave the customs union so we can get free trade agreements with the likes of the United States, who are really keen to do a quick, limited deal next year. you accept that we're going to have to leave the customs union as well? if you want to do those trade deals. What I would say is let's have some tangible evidence put forward, not just we're going to get all these trade deals. Let's have some hard evidence that the trade deals that we would negotiate well, the in the future... Well, the evidence we've got is that there's, there's, it, there's, there's trillions we of all, GDP from we, countries yeah, who've already said... But you said see, I'm confused want, by this wish. because Liam Fox has been saying, well, we might stay in the customs union, and he's the man who's supposedly going to do these new trade deals. He's, look, he's keeping his options open, as I said before, until the Prime Minister lays out her stall. But we know that the United States, which is our biggest single export partner, right, as a nation, they are very keen to do not a quick... Not as big as the European Union put together. Not even close. But they are the biggest single country. Yeah, we not have, as big as the we, European Union. Uh, hang on, I mean, we're 44% we of all right. our exports. Yeah, so but we have a deficit. That, I mean, if we... No, Adam, we have a deficit with the European Union. We have a surplus with the United States, OK? It's surpluses that create value and create wealth for the nation, not deficits. In the single market, we pay in 10 billion and we lose almost 100 billion of trade every year. So for this ephemeral trade deal that may or may not happen with the United States, on whatever terms they want, you would seemingly sign up to it, you're going to abandon, but comfortably, our actual single biggest marketplace where we sell half no. our goods, the single market, and you're going to abandon the 50-odd trade deals we, we have with other countries but, but what, what already about, what about through the, the point, What about the point he's made that, in fact, it's a deficit relationship with uh, Europe, whereas it's a surplus relationship with America? Well, Richard seems to suggest that the idea of going to the negotiations would be that you put a gun to the head of your nearest trading partners and dare them to put tariffs, tariffs on you. But the, res the result of leaving the single market without any trading arrangement in place is you move on to WTO yep. rules, and that means tariffs. It means tariffs not just with the European unit, of which there are none at the moment. It means tariffs with everybody else as that's, well. Every look, single most, business Most nations figure, around the world, every single most nations around the world have access with the European Union on a WTO basis, and it works very well. So you, know, so you want not, to see a 10% tariff on cars, 20-odd percent on agricultural products. That's what you get with WTO rules. We're, as the Prime Minister has already said, we're going to offer a zero-tariff deal. 
And it, because they sell so much more to us, it's in their interest to do it. If they don't, we're quite happy fine. with WTO. If that, fine. If that happens, that happens. What if it doesn't happen? You're just going to go to WTO. WTO. But that's 10% on cars, 20 or percent on agricultural tariffs. It's going to decimate manufacturing. Your own, decimate manufacturing. your own economist, Patrick Minford, said it would. He's your lead economist. It's he said it would decimate, decimate manufacturing. manufacturing. Our exports in the UK. are now going that's up. That's what he We've said. Had the he's your own economist. Benefit. We'll sell more cars, and if that means that actually we sell more cars that are made in the UK into the UK. Fine. It will, no, but for ordinary people, it will mean higher prices, won't it? Well, it's interesting that, isn't it? You know, uh, everybody talks about inflation, but actually the inflation numbers, they're not creeping up no, to I'm the extent just, that no, the media talks about. I'm not talking about. about inflation. I'm talking about tariffs as well on traded goods. Well, most of that, if, if tariffs, most of that is if likely to be... come in on traded We live in such a competitive world. It inflation means ordinary is, people are going to be paying more for cars for what they buy in the supermarket. Well, it depends it, how much clothes. is absorbed by the suppliers and by the dealers. And the, uh, the, yeah, yeah, but they can't they can't absorb everything. If, well, if, it, if they have been if so, it costs more. Yeah, but we haven't got to the point of these we live new in such trade a arrangements coming in. We live in such a competitive market that actually suppliers and retailers are always worried about other businesses taking market share, so they will absorb the lion's share of that. We're already seeing that. So what you're saying is somebody's going to pay the price for your idea. Either it's going to be but British no... businesses or it's going to be the consumer. Well, or, in reality, it's going to be both. Well, why would we just voluntarily we're slap a 10% tariff on a new we're car? We're not voluntarily. Why voluntarily, why James, we're going to offer zero tariffs. Well, or you it's, could... it's, it's the European Union who voluntarily might say, thanks, but no thanks. It's, 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 which it's is more two... destructive to them because they sell so much more to us than we it, do to them. It's a two-way street. It affects, us, it affects us both. Your idea seems to be go to a high noon showdown where you don't even try and negotiate. such language. It'll well, be a friendly discussion and we'll either reach an agreement or we won't. You've said what you're either going to... Want, what businesses want is the certainty of knowing when we're going well, to... A lot of people it. are saying we certainly won't reach an agreement within two years. Well, in, but in which case, fine, at least you know the end date and you know the base case yeah. to work to. And businesses can organise I mean, on and that if basis. You had, if you had a choice it, it, from your organisation's point of view uh, between just saying, right, two years are up, we're out, or two years are up, and we're going to carry on with present arrangements for a while for a transition phase. Definitely. Which Two years are up, we're out, because that's the way we take advantage of the opportunities. Well, I think it's a terrible idea for the economy, as does, I think, everybody else who looks at it in really any detail. Don't. The CBI not. have got you, a report out today warning against the exactly CBI, the great protectionist, this. The great protectionist just, of big business. Anybody whose views you don't like with you say they have no right to say, they have no credibility. Look at, every, look, right look at what your own, are, your own economist then. Patrick Minford is your own economist. He's about the only he's, economist. He's, my economist. Right. He's, he's the lead economist. sides economist. He's about the only one who no, backs your, there's about the only one who backs your position. Them, Gerard Lyons. Gerard Lyons. Lyons. Gerard Lyons. Okay. There's a, there's Patrick a Minford has said that your model of moving yeah. to WTO would decimate manufacturing in the UK. That's three million jobs in this, in this country. That's thousands of businesses. Right. But hang on, hang on. People are investing in manufacturing businesses in the UK. I see it in the real estate industry. Manufacturing is increasing, not decreasing. After Brexit, and that's we are good news still in the single market. If we go to WTO, yeah, but people know rules, we're leaving. People know we're leaving. Not to go on to WTO rules, they well, don't. That, yeah. that has to be the. Well, you, I, I mean, it has to be said. There's another report out today on uh, house building, saying that we're in a parlour state on house building. What do you mean a parlour state? Well, we're we, just, we've got a housing shortage. Yeah, exactly. But, but actually, we've, we've got, got a housing well, shortage, and we're not look, building enough houses. That doesn't mean it's a parlour state. That means there's a supply issue. But look at the house builders. They're actually their results are good. They're selling well. You know, post Brexit, things are looking up for house building, and the more the better. But sooner or later, we're not going to be able to have this phony war anymore because actual decisions exactly. are going to have to and be the, taken. And, 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 the and, and, the and then the Prime then, Minister and gets on with it and sets out her stall but you in can't. a courageous right. and bold way. Right, well, we'll have you both back for a blow by blow commentary. Thank you very much indeed. This is all out politics. Come out.